The Sega Dreamcast. Now over 20 years old, the Dreamcast represents an unprecedented era of creativity within Sega. With a huge range of remarkable games spread across every genre imaginable, Sega's final console remains popular even today for very good reason. But while Dreamcast's video output options were forward-looking for the time, taking full advantage of it today isn't quite as easy as you'd expect. Enter DC HDMI, a new solution for those who desire pristine image quality on a modern flat panel display. This internal modification is the first and only fully digital solution for Dreamcast video output. It overcomes issues often encountered with other solutions while offering the sharpest possible video output from your Dreamcast console. Thus on this episode of DF Retro, we're focusing on the DC HDMI project, showing its features and results while drawing comparisons to other solutions on the market today. So, let us enter the world of Dreamcast HDMI. I don't know. What do you think? Released in late 1998 in Japan, the Dreamcast holds a special place in my heart and in the hearts of Sega fans around the world. This is the first console I pre-ordered and purchased on day one in North America. 9999 was the day and it was glorious. With Soul Calibur, Sonic Adventure, and Blue Stinger in tow, I fired up my new Dreamcast and was floored. It truly felt like the future was upon us. And in some ways, this feeling helped influence my own future by fueling my love of games and technology. The Dreamcast itself, powered by Hitachi's SH4 CPU and a PowerVR variant GPU, delivers high-resolution visuals with perspective-correct filtered textures at super smooth frame rates. More than anything, it was this leap in performance that really stood out. There were certainly 60 frames per second 3D games on consoles prior to Dreamcast, but it was relatively uncommon. It's even more impressive when you consider the competition. Dreamcast was released just two and a half years after Nintendo 64, but it truly feels like a generation apart. Dreamcast is also the first console to truly deliver arcade perfection in the home. It was finally possible to experience Sega Model 3 caliber visuals on a console, and Sega even created the Naomi arcade platform, which shares most of its hardware directly with Dreamcast, which means games like Virtua Tennis and Crazy Taxi could make the jump to home console with minimal to no changes. It may seem quaint now, but Dreamcast finally delivered on the promise that Sega first made back in the late 80s with Sega Mega Drive. The arcade had finally come home. And while Dreamcast was only on the market for a very short time, it sure burned brightly. It was an exciting time in gaming. So yeah, I love Sega Dreamcast. And one of its best attributes at the time was full support for VGA output. Until Dreamcast's arrival, most game consoles displayed graphics at lower resolution 15kHz 240p, but Dreamcast made the jump to full 31kHz 480p and it was glorious. It works great on a classic PC monitor of this era, but if you're trying to play Dreamcast on an HDTV, either via VGA or some form of analog to digital converter, there are some issues. You see, the Dreamcast generates a DTV signal much like other consumer electronics of this era. While only 640x480s worth of pixels are ever drawn, this is contained within a 720x480 frame. Typically, with modern displays, this is interpreted as a true PC-like 640x480 image, eliminating lines in the process. The result, a loss in image clarity with minor distortion and a narrow aspect ratio. And this is where the DC HDMI comes in. It taps directly into the system, delivering all pixels digitally to your display at a variety of output resolutions, and as you can see, it looks great. The question is, how does it stack up against the other options available? 
There are many ways to extract the VGA signal from Dreamcast, but not all of them are created equally. For this video then, we're comparing DC HDMI against four other products, including the Behar Brothers Toro VGA box, the Akura HDMI box, Pound Technologies HDMI cable, and Sega's official VGA box. But before we continue, remember, DC HDMI can output full 1080p or 960p directly to your display using integer scaling, enabling crystal clear pixel definition. All other options mentioned in this video are limited to 480p output, which means if you're not playing on an old VGA monitor, you need to rely on your TV's internal scaler or an external solution such as the open source scan converter. When connecting any of these boxes to your TV, then you're likely to encounter results like this. A soft image upscaled to your panel's native resolution complete with sampling errors. This of course does not apply to DC HDMI. But let's say you have an OSSC. Well, using default settings, even there you'll notice some issues. Here we're comparing the output of DC HDMI against the Toro box in 2x480p mode. And while it looks better, pixel edges aren't quite perfect. So by using the 480p in sampler option, you can improve clarity producing a sharper image. So if you're using this combo, be sure to enable the setting on your OSSC. With that in mind then, let's start with the baseline, the official Sega VGA adapter. When using this adapter, 480p output is achieved via a DE15 connector, and expectedly the results are excellent. The problem is, it's analog VGA out only, which isn't a great fit for modern displays. When using the OSSC though, the results are crisp and clean, but there are some mild color reproduction issues that I noticed even when using neutral settings. Despite this, the overall picture quality is excellent. I've owned a number of different third-party boxes over the years, but I feel that Sega's original VGA box is the best of them all. I do feel that the DC HDMI has some advantages over this box, but keep in mind that Sega released this on the market during the time when most PC monitors were CRTs, which could natively display a 40p signal, so it was a great fit. Still, without one of those monitors, the only way to match DC HDMI in terms of clarity, again, is with an OSSC, which is extra hardware and extra cost. Of course, this VGA box isn't exactly common, which brings us to the Toro. I feel that this is the most flexible option from the Behar brothers, as you can use an external line doubler or scaler on a modern display, or simply stick with analog output for use on a CRT. Using an OSSC for capture, the results aren't quite as refined as Sega's own VGA box. It's close, but not quite perfect. I also encountered color errors, especially when using the SCART output, which supports 480p. The yellow here in Crazy Taxi appears rather garish compared to the more natural and correct orange you get on DC HDMI, and here you can see some detail on the back of the cab is crushed on the Toro. Still, results are good overall, but there's another problem. These Behar Brothers adapters use a modular cable, which is highly sensitive. I've already had to replace it once, but the second one is already exhibiting problems. Just moving the box around is enough to trigger connectivity issues, which manifest like this. And these cable issues apply to the other Behar Brothers product, the Akura. It's a similar box, but outputs HDMI instead. Unfortunately, this means you can't use the OSSC to improve results, thus you're stuck with native 480p output, which is blurry and exhibits typical Dreamcast sampling issues. Now, the signal itself isn't blurry, the problem lies with the way the various displays will scale the image. Most modern TVs do not handle 480p well. You could use something like the Framemeister, which has HDMI inputs, but 480p is not exactly its specialty. Honestly though, while each solution has its share of flaws, they're all reasonably solid. None quite match the pixel perfect clarity of the DC HDMI, nor the plug and play simplicity however. Where DC HDMI excels though is in its ability to output a perfectly sharp 1080p image without any additional hardware beyond the Dreamcast and DC HDMI board itself. But each of these solutions are also rather pricey, which is where Pound Technologies comes in. Pound has marketed a range of affordable cables for multiple systems, and that includes Dreamcast. Coming in at just 30 bucks, it seems like a great deal, but based on my experience, the results leave a lot to be desired. Right away, it's clear that the Pound cables produce a darker, blurrier, uglier overall image. Colors are basically ruined, and everything appears muddy. 
It's a far cry from the original VGA box, and it doesn't come close to matching the DC HDMI. There seems to be an engineering fault in the design of the cable, honestly. It's an easy and cheap method to play via HDMI, but it's just not worth using as a result of the huge loss in image quality. I would recommend staying far, far away from the pound cable. Jet Set Radio. Radio. One other feature that none of these additional cables support though is 240p, which is another benefit of DC HDMI. That's right, for lower resolution 240p titles, the DC HDMI can perform a 4x scale on these games, outputting them into a 1080p window. This produces the same super sharp results and looks excellent. 240p isn't normally supported in VGA, so this is a great feature. Beyond that, the DC HDMI has its own on-screen display with various options to adjust. This is accessible by holding both triggers, X and A, while hitting start. The first thing you'll run into is the option to adjust output resolution. I would recommend sticking with 1080p or 960p for optimal clarity on a modern display, but lower resolutions are available to fit your needs as well. Scan lines too are available and adjustable from the menu, but I don't feel this option makes much sense for your typical Dreamcast game. But if you're curious, this is what it looks like. And I suppose if you think about it, you will see a subtle scanline effect as well on a real CRT monitor if you look closely at a 640x480 image. It's just that when you sit further back on a modern display, these smaller scanlines simply give the impression of a darker image without really adding anything, so I prefer running without them. There are also video options included which help determine how the system will boot games. Certain titles, for instance, do not function properly with a VGA cable connected. Sometimes you can force it, but other times you'll need to use cable select. By plugging in an analog cable such as composite video, the system will change its output type. You can control this as well at boot up by simply holding down on the D-pad while starting the system. It's also worth reiterating that you can use both DC HDMI and an analog output simultaneously. This mod does not disable the Dreamcast's analog output. DC HDMI also supports 480i titles using either a Bob D interlace or simply passing through the interlaced output. It doesn't look great necessarily, but it's nice to have the option in those rare cases where it's necessary. Some Dreamcast games just won't work any other way. In regards to Hydro Thunder, I should note that if you have the hot new version, it does support VGA, but the original version I have here, which ships on a blue disc rather than a red disc as you see on the updated version, does not seem to work with VGA. You can also connect the DC HDMI to your Wi-Fi network, enabling firmware updates, which often introduces new features. 240p support was added via firmware, for instance, and a new HQ2X mode is on the way right now. This is currently just in testing though, but it's basically a filter applied to the image. This is a method for transforming a single pixel into a 2x2 two two interpolated block with new pixel information. This works by basically comparing color values of each pixel to surrounding pixels, marking pixel distance, and then using a lookup table to determine the correct pixels to display. It helps eliminate dithering while also smoothing out edges. And it's very effective, but its usefulness will vary based upon content. From a normal viewing distance though, it's rather effective. So by now, I think it's pretty clear that the results from DC HDMI are excellent. Games are super crisp and clean, and colors are extremely accurate. So yeah, it looks great, but how does it actually work? Well, firstly, DC HDMI is a little more complicated than a typical mod. You've already seen the board and the back of the system, but basically it's an internal FPGA-based solution wired directly to the GPU via traces connecting to the digital-to-analog converter. Unlike other solutions, though, this is pure digital, pulling video directly from the system and manipulating it before outputting to the HDMI transmitter. As for installation, a range of installers are available around the world, or you can choose to install it yourself, but it requires some soldering skills. It also requires a slight modification to the case, but mounting it beneath the system board helps limit the impact. Once installed then, you'll need to use a mini HDMI cable to connect to your display. Beyond that though, it should work just like any modern HDMI device. DC HDMI also handles audio, exactly as you would expect. 
Like the video output, audio is pulled digitally from the system and passed through the HDMI transmitter. And this is one area where VGA boxes often fell a little short, I've found, with audible humming occurring on some units or crackling when adjusting the volume. DC HDMI eliminates this entirely, enabling the cleanest possible audio from the system. It sounds pretty good, right? There is no background humming, no electrical noise, just raw, high quality audio, and it sounds wonderful. It also works easily with any standard audio equipment. And that's really what makes DC HDMI such an attractive product. Once you get it installed, it just works. And the fact that it outputs both HDMI and analog video ensures that it can do double duty in both a retro setup and when used with a modern display. Even better is the fact that you don't need to rely on a bulky VGA box or dongle any longer. A simple mini HDMI cable is all you need for both audio and video. So it sounds pretty good then, right? But there is one thing to keep in mind, the price. This is an expensive product coming in at 150 US dollars. It's a situation where the production cost and reliance on an FPGA chip bumped the cost up. But if you start looking closer at other options I mentioned earlier, well, the $150 price tag doesn't seem so bad. Basically, the cheapest way to get HDMI from your Dreamcast is the pound cable at 30 bucks, but it's a case where the price kind of reflects quality. It's a terrible cable that produces inferior results to any other VGA or HDMI solutions I've used. It's very easy to use, but the quality just isn't there, so I suggest avoiding it. Then we have the Akura. This is $65, but you're limited to 480p output exclusively, which I suppose is the same with the pound. The difference here is that the image quality is pretty good, but it's not exactly well suited to modern displays. Most modern TVs will blur the image when scaling 480p up to the native panel resolution. And while you could combine it with an expensive frame meister, the quality there is still below DC HDMI. Then there are the other analog solutions, such as the Toro, which is 60 bucks, or another VGA box entirely. When used with a CRT monitor, the results are definitely great. But if you want to enjoy these products using HDMI, you'll need to include something like an OSSC in the cost, which is more expensive than the DC HDMI, though at least it does serve many purposes, so I kind of recommend having one anyway. The point is, getting pristine quality from a Dreamcast isn't exactly that cheap or easy. There's a lot of caveats to consider with many products as well, such as the lack of support for 240p games and VGA, and issues with 480i. The DC HDMI, however, handles every use case you can throw at it, and it does so in a compact package. But with its price tag, it's clearly designed for Dreamcast enthusiasts. Still, this is without a doubt the single most impressive option I've seen for video output from a Dreamcast. And if it sounds like something you've been looking for, give it a look. If there's one thing that revisiting the Dreamcast for this video made clear though, this is a great system to revisit today. It's absolutely packed with things like shooters, fighting games, and other arcade style games that are perfect for pick up and play action. And if you want something with more depth, there's plenty of interesting RPGs and other adventure games as well. I could go on and on about the Dreamcast of course, but perhaps I'll save that for a future episode of DF Retro. For now though, I think that's just about it for the moment. If you enjoyed this video as always, be sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell at the top to help out the channel, and follow us over on Twitter if you want to chat about Dreamcast or anything else. And until next time, stay retro.